Hey, welcome back all you awesome people. We're doing another awesome painting tutorial today. It's actually another building block painting. And what I mean by that is I showed you not too long ago how to paint this right here, which is an easy painting that shows you how to do sky, land, and water. And I'm gonna show you version 2.0 of this painting to where we're gonna make something that's actually something you're gonna be proud of with just a few simple steps. But if you haven't had a chance yet, paint this painting first, because it's gonna teach you all the skills you need to do the painting we're about to do on this canvas here. Let's go. Hey, welcome back all you awesome and creative people. Wow, I'm here to make sure your painting adventures become bigger and better with a little bit of fun. Now, real quick, like we said at the beginning, if you haven't had a chance to do the building block painting video to this one, gonna put it in the top right of the corner over there. Check it out before you start this. Also, if you need to know what colors, tools, brushes, anything like that, gonna put them down in the video description below so that way you can check them out. By the way, all those links help me out. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Now, let's dive into this bad boy, enjoy. I already went ahead and put on all my liquid clear and rubbed it lightly with a shop towel so that way I just have a little bit of oil on. Next up is figure out our horizon line. Go smack across the middle and just go about an inch up and this is where our horizon's going to be. But don't worry about it. If you want it in the middle, make it in the middle. To start, I'm just gonna start throwing in a little bit of red all around the outside of my canvas. Leave this little spot black because we're gonna add a little bit of yellow in there in a moment. Gonna go into a little bit of purple and do the same thing, just add a little bit of color out here. This is just base color, so don't worry about it at the moment. With some cadmium yellow, we're gonna start putting in our light source right around here. All I'm gonna do is just do some U-strokes back and forth. And what we're gonna do is just start pulling out our yellow over to the side and create a nice little light source that's fading from right to left and dissipates as we get away from it. And as you'll see, it'll start picking up a little bit of that undercolor, but leave some black spots in here, okay? We're just gonna brighten this spot up because this is our light source, so add a little more yellow. Grab a little bit of red, and let's add some accent pieces in here that'll mix with our yellow to create a nice little orange, and also some starburst red spots. See how fast and loose I am with this? Don't pay too much attention to it. Same dirty brush, let's start adding a little bit of purple in here. Just kicking in some spots. Now that we can see our light source, let's start streaking a little more color across, still using yellow. Just gonna add a little bit more here, bring it across, maybe a strong streak there, strong streak there, maybe a little bit that fades up and away into this and gets darker on this side. Again, I'm just being very, very fast and loose with this. This is just establishing my light source. We'll come back and add a little bit more here in a moment. Gonna fade and blend this color in just ever so lightly with a two inch brush, so that way it blends with all these colors here in the background. And I'm just doing cross strokes. With a little bit of purple and a little bit of phthalo blue, I'm just gonna start working in this corner because I want this side to be darker. And again, this is gonna be base color and I'm just gonna follow around my light source really quick. This is just to add in a little bit of base. Don't worry too much about it yet, just yet. We're gonna pull this forward here in just a quick moment. Now let's start pulling our color forward. We're gonna use a one inch brush with even distributed titanium white and we're gonna put a dot right there. And this is gonna be our light source because remember our colors and sunlight's coming from that side. So I'm just gonna start pulling all this forward and spiraling around my sun here. And I'm just gonna put in some strong streaks, put a little right there. Maybe a little bit up here. Just gonna go back and add a little bit of red in here, just give it a little more color as it fades. And then add a little more of this blue up in here as it fades and comes down here. Now with a clean two inch brush, we can start lightly just blending this in to get a velvet smooth. Start with our yellow, work it into our horizon, then work out to our red, and then work out to our bluish purple color. We're just gonna work down this horizon line because we're gonna put some stuff in front of it. Now with some sap green and a little bit of phthalo blue and a tiny bit of yellow, we're gonna add in a tree line that comes across and down. We're gonna do this in two layers here. And all we're gonna do is come straight at our canvas and start chipping down at it right in front of the sun. And what you wanna do is make some of your trees big and thick, some thin and skinny, and some very, very light and some really, really thick. And this will add depth to your painting. 
Try not to make it look like a picket fence, so have some high, have some low, but try to make it look like it's fading off into the distance as we go from right to left. Also, don't be afraid to reload your brush. Clean off your fan brush really quick, and we're just gonna pull straight up in short strokes to make these trees be vertical. So that way it looks like they're growing straight up in the distance is how they would look from a very, very far away. Just very light pull, almost just grazing across it. The bristles will do the work here. We're not worried about the bottom of the tree, so just worry about getting the tips of the trees kind of straight. To add more depth to our painting, we're just gonna take a little bit of yellow and find some spots where we can streak up into our trees, like some light is kind of escaping through on some parts. Just holding the brush on the side and pushing it in and flicking it up. I'm not really putting much emphasis on it because since this is in the background here, there's not much detail. Wipe off your brush on a paper towel and again, just pull lightly up. This way it'll clean the streaks up that we just put in. With a clean two inch brush, let's fade this into the background. Hold it vertically and use the top part of the bristles to jam in and pull down a little bit. And we're just gonna tap, literally tap this color down into our horizon line. So this way it fades everything kind of into the background. So when we layer it, it's gonna look way, way better and in the distance. Just like that. Now we can pull up ever so slightly to work out all those tapping motions we made. Very, very light touch here. Now we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're just gonna load up the brush with pretty much the same color except I added a little more blue. So it's just gonna be slightly darker, but it's still in the background here. And we're gonna fade these from left to right. So just work in and tap the same color in and down and across and in front of that tree line there. Again, these are background trees, so don't put too much effort into it. Pull up ever so slightly just to correct my strokes a little bit here and fade it into the background. Taking some yellow here, and rather than hold it vertically, I'm gonna hold it horizontally and kind of just streak up here a little bit just to add a little bit. Push a little harder on this side because my sun's over here. And this way it'll add a little base of sunlight kicking through. Repeat the same steps. Let's tap this down and out. And remember, we're only concentrating on the bottom of our tree line here. Wipe off my brush on a loose paper towel and pull straight up very, very lightly to make sure our tree line is growing straight and up. Now let's push this back and add our foreground. We're gonna take a little bit of green, a little bit of black, and a little bit of blue. Equal proportions of each, and let's throw in a rolling hill that generally just fades off and down to the side here. So we can put a little bit of water in, just like our last painting. So let's just start tapping in a small rolling hill here. And all I'm doing is using the corner of the brush to direct where I want my land to go. And as you can see, we're starting to push these trees nice and back. And then the harder you push and you let these bristles bend, it's gonna make this ground fade in a little bit, which means when we put another layer in front of it, it's gonna look like multiple layers of grass fields, okay? It'll also stand out when we put some highlight on it. So don't worry about it too much. Now with a touch of yellow, a little bit of red, and a little bit of white, just to lighten it up, let's start adding our highlights to our land to really shape it and bring it forward. Now remember, our light source is over here, so our brightest parts are gonna be right around this area as it goes down, and it should fade away, but don't worry about that if you're just starting out. Just think about how you should have bright colors right under your light source. And I'm just gonna start lightly tapping in here with my one inch brush, and start shaping my land ever so slightly. I'm just taking my brush and I'm curling it down this ridge so that way it picks up more of this green and black color. So that way it naturally fades to a light, but we'll also fix this with a clean brush here in a moment. I'm just laying the foundation if you were curious to what I was doing. With a clean one inch brush, and I do mean very clean, we're gonna tap down and in from our highlights into this dark green, black, blue color that we put. So that way it gives a little bit of shape to our hill. Don't overdo it because we wanna leave this black in here so that way it creates planes and layers. Now this is gonna be a little hard for you guys to see. So you'll have a better impression when you go in, but just start with the corner of your brush and slightly just tap things in. 
Now for our background layer here, which is this back hill, you can actually tap on top of your highlights because this will actually make them look more visible by blurring them out and making them softer, which will make them look like they're more in the background and also give you more pigment to really work into this green color here to make it more of a hill that looks like it's in the background. But just sit here and tap in what you want and what you don't want, okay? With a little bit of cad yellow and red and liquid white and titanium white mixed in, I can go back in here and add some highlights that are gonna make it a little more specular to stand out if I wanna roll these hills in any particular way. Now this will stick on here a lot easier, so don't overdo it because you will lose all those base highlights we put in here. You can also mix this with a little bit of color if you want, so that way it gets you a little bit of red or purple, but I'm just gonna leave it this pretty honey auburn color. Sorry if I block the cam, it's a little hard for me to see painting from an angle. See how those specular highlights really make it stand out? Now, if there's things you don't like, like we did before, you can tap things in. Like, I kind of think this looks like a big mush of a bush over here, more like mush of our landscape. So I'm just gonna tap it in ever so lightly so it fades into that undergreen because I only want a little bit of highlight on this giant hill. I like the concentration kind of cascading down and across but you do whatever you think is best for your painting. It kind of looks like little flowers or weeds are kind of growing in here, and that looks really pretty. With straight yellow, we want to go right below our lighting source, and we're going to add a couple of streaks. And all I'm going to do is push straight down below my land and streak down. And I'm going to add a little bit over here too, because I'm going to break it up here with this yellow color and just kind of fade it down and across to wherever I think it should be. Same dirty brush, we're gonna go into red and do the same thing and add some streaks and some spots here. Don't be afraid to go over some of that yellow, make a beautiful orange. Gonna put a little bit of that purple down here, maybe a little right there, right here, and then more of it over here. And then since this part's in the background, let's do a big strong thing of phthalo blue and just fade it in and down and across on this side here, maybe a tiny bit down here. With some titanium white, let's start pulling this color forward. Wherever your strongest streaks are, start there. Just pull down, pull down, pull down. And let's just start slightly blending in all these colors here with some strong streaks. Some big, some small, some fat, some thin. It's really up to you. But this titanium white will start pulling all of these colors forward. And you wanna have less paint as you go this way because remember, this is in the background here. Let's add a little bit more, some strong streaks. Maybe just a tiny one right there, just caught. And I'm just literally grabbing the canvas with my paintbrush and pulling and attacking. Let's pull some of this color slightly down. I'm just gonna take a two inch brush and start cleaning this up and start pulling my land and making it even with my water. Just again, pulling straight down, straight down. And now we can make it water. We're just gonna go from right to left or left to right, whichever easiest for your hand. And slowly just start fading in this water here. Let's level out our land and put some water in here, some water lines. Keep these nice and straight. Push harder on these ones in the background to make it fade out a little bit more. And then you could choose to leave this how it is, but I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of white back here that'll fade eventually with a brush. So that way it looks like there's just some shore break way, way, way back in there in the distance, which I'll clean up with the brush here in just a moment. Clean this up, there we go. There we go, now it looks like it just fades way back in there. All right, let's put one more hill and kind of really wrap this in to make an ultra foreground, not a real term, but going with it. And we're just gonna lay in a nice little rolling hill, put it wherever you think it should go. And this is just the same base color we used before. All I did with this, just add a little more black to it. This thing just dives right into the water right there in my mind. Take that same honey color that we used over here and let's just start tapping in. 
some more detailed highlights here. Stronger highlight down here. I feel like the sun would be hitting a little bit over here. Let's take a little bit of white and just a few little specular highlights in here where it might have caught. The canvas will take what it needs. And maybe just add a little bit of red in here for fun. Make some different planes. Maybe there's some different bushes that settled over here. It's cold over here because the sun's further away, so these can be a little more muted in color. I'm just gonna tap this out so it's not so strong here on the bottom. Got a little bit of thinner there, that's fine. Just wipe it out a little bit. Just gonna blend this in here to make it more water-esque. And take out some strong points that I don't like. And there you go, you got yourself an awesome building block painting. Like I said, this is version 2.0. There is another version after this that keeps building on top of this to keep getting you better and better progression in your skills and talent, and yeah, in your confidence, so that way your paintings get better and better every time. You've got a beautiful sky with a little bit of played color here that's muted because it's sunset. You've got a nice little tree line here that looks in the background. You've got a mid-ground and a foreground with awesome rolling hills with some colors in there that correlate to the lighting source. And you've got a nice little muted river or lake or whatever you want that plays off the sunlight there because again, it is setting. So you learned a lot of skills here without even really knowing what was going on. But now that I showed you, it all makes sense. Why this is an awesome building block painting. So I'm glad I could show you version 0.1, now version 0.2. And if you are interested and you wanna see what version 0.3 is, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below and let me know you wanna see that and I will be more than happy. Hey, we can even do a version four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'll keep taking you up and up a level because I wanna teach you the base skills. Now, if you need any more help with painting with any particular tips, tricks, or maybe even certain brushes that are gonna make you a better painter, gonna put a few videos over here to the side. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know the tutorials are long, but I really hope they make you bigger and better. And as always, peace.